Good morning, Boone's Creek, and welcome to Sunday School. I'm uh, extremely happy to be here with you this morning, extremely happy that we could have Sunday School this morning. Um, and before we get started, when we start our Sunday School time with a prayer. Dear God, we're thankful, Lord, we can be here this morning together as your church, Lord, that we can come together, God, with a hope and a faith in Christ in common. We pray, God, that you be with us as we're in your word, as we study your word, Lord, that your spirit would speak to us, God, uh, that because we've read your word, we would grow in faith and become more Christ-like. I pray that you be with each person that's with us this morning as they're in their Bible, Lord, studying too, and we just pray for your blessings upon us, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, this morning we're going to continue in um, our Sunday school lessons. We've been going through the Sermon on the Mount, and today we're going to wrap up the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, so if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn that to Matthew chapter 7. So here at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus, of course, has been talking for quite some time to those gathered to listen to him. And he's talked a lot about the Christian life. What should the Christian life look like? What does a life look like that's going to be devoted to Christ? And so here he comes to kind of wrapping up that lesson, and he's going to talk about a foundation. Where should our foundation be? And you think about our foundation as a person. What does that mean? What, is it, what does it mean to say, this is my foundation, this is where I have my foundation? And that word foundation can kind of get a little um, confusing to us, because when we think of a foundation, we think of, you know, I build my house on a solid foundation. And that is really, truly what Jesus is talking about, and we'll see that in the story. But if I want to put that more in a perspective of a human person, what's my foundation? I may think about what is my identity, and what or in whom do I put my identity? And so if we think about that question, you're sitting there at home today, maybe the kitchen table or on the, on the couch or wherever, think about that question, in what or in whom do people put their identity? Think about the different things that people place their identity in, in our world today. You know, we can name a few of those things. Sometimes people put their identity in their own children. Sometimes put, people put their identity in their spouse. Uh, sometimes people put their identity in a sport or in sports. People put their identity in their image, how they look. People put their identity in their clothes. People put their identity in their health and fitness. A lot of people put their identity in politics. A lot of people put their identity in their job or in their wealth or their power or their status. So these are the things that we see a lot in our world that people put their identity in. But if we think about what do all of those things have in common? All of those things that we can think about that people put their identity in. Well, one of the first things that comes to mind is none of those things are permanent. All of those things will fade away. And all of those things will let us down. We were not made for those things. We weren't made for sports. We weren't made for politics. We weren't made for an image. Those aren't the things that we were made for. And so those things will never truly satisfy. Those things are not what we are here for. So let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Let's go to verse 24. And we'll see what Jesus says about our foundation, about our identity. And I'm going to read from the New American Standard this morning. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. Again, this is Jesus talking here at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. And he tells the people, if you hear these words and act on them, then that's similar to a man who builds a house on a rock foundation a solid foundation. And the rains descend and the floods come and the winds blow and burst against the house and yet the house does not fall. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act upon them will be like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand and the rains descended and the floods came and the wind blew and burst against that house and it fell and a great fall it was. You know, I, I want to ask a question. During these times that we're in right now, I know it's been kind of crazy. Has anybody said to themselves, anybody ask a question, you know, where's God right now? Where's God today? During all this time, you know, we've, we've been closed up. We've had this scare of this uh, virus. There seems to be a lot of panic in our world. Have you wondered where God is in this? 
Has that been a question that's crossed your mind? Have you wondered, is he really in control? Well, this is what I want to remind you of. This lesson that we're reading today, Matthew chapter 7, starting with verse 24, was planned months ago. David and the ministers put this together months ago. God knew we were going to be in this scripture today. So if we have any doubt about God being in control, obviously there's all kinds of reasons, but we can wipe that out right now. God knew we were going to be in this scripture today in a Sunday school hour, talking about where is our identity. And we know exactly where our identity is. Christ has told us. So we should have no thoughts of that. God has us in the scripture today for a reason. He's planned it, and here we are. And that is where our identity is in Christ alone. So look at what Jesus says. If you hear these words of mine, if we listen to the word of God, remember John, the gospel of John, chapter one, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All of scripture is the word, Jesus Christ. If we hear these words of Christ and act upon them, then we're like that wise man who built his house upon a solid foundation. Our identity will be in Jesus Christ. So if we hear the words and we act upon them, if we believe, that here is like belief. Um, you know, we know in Scripture that if we, if we hear the word, then our faith will be strengthened. So if we believe, that leads us to action. Our beliefs guide our action. Where I place my identity is going to guide my actions. If I put my identity in Jesus Christ, then my actions are going to show that. They're going to reflect that. And when the storms come, as he says, these, listen to these words again. The rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and burst against the house. And yet it did not fall for it had been founded upon the rock. Think about it. The, the storms of life, when they come and they do come, we're in the midst of a storm right now. When those storms come, if our identity is in Jesus Christ, we will stand firm because we're standing on Jesus Christ. You know, think about Peter. If you remember Peter... Um, when, remember, they were in the boat, and Jesus wasn't with them. They had gone out. Jesus wasn't with them. And they're standing on the boat, and getting late at night, and here comes Jesus walking on the water. You remember that story? You know what I'm talking about? You've read that. And so Jesus is coming out on the water. He's walking on the water, and Peter sees him. And Peter's really impetuous. He wants exactly what he wants, exactly when he wants it, which is right now. And so he sees Jesus coming. And so Peter gets out of the boat to walk toward him. And you remember what happened with, with Peter, right? He could walk on the water toward Jesus. As long as his eyes were on Christ, as long as he was focused on Christ, he could walk on that water to go see Christ. So as Peter's walking, he can see Christ and he's walking on water. Well, then the waves, the storms start coming, just like what we have here in the scripture. When the rains descend and the floods come and the wind blow and burst against the house, Peter's walking on that water and the, and the waves are kind of coming up on him and he takes his eyes off Christ and that's when he begins to sink. And that's with us. If we put our identity in Christ, we will stand firm. It doesn't matter what storm comes. It doesn't matter what happens in our lives. The earthly circumstances, the things that happen here, don't matter. When our identity is in Christ, we'll stand firm with him. When those storms come, I can stand because Christ stands. And that's it. So as we look at, these, at this scripture, and we wrap up the Sermon on the Mount, and we wrap up our Sunday school time today, remember... And I, I don't know how to say it any more clearly. Remember, our identity is in Christ alone. There is no other identity. Our identity, not in how I look, not in image, not in power, not in job, not in health, not in my children, not in my spouse, not in politics, not in anything else. Our identity is in Christ alone. And when our identity is in Christ alone, we can weather any storm. The things of this earth will pass away. We know that. The scripture tells us. The things of this earth will pass away, but Christ will never pass away. And that is where we put our identity. So I know that now. And remember Jesus said, anyone who hears and anyone who acts upon it. So how do I act upon it? I act upon it by living in Christ. If you would just turn over to Colossians really, really quickly. Colossians chapter 3. Paul's writing to us in Colossians chapter 3. Start with verse 1 and he says... If then you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. So my, again, my identity, I set myself on Christ, not on earthly things. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 
See, the things that make me want to put my identity with things on this earth, though, the part of me that wants to have my identity in my job, the part of me that wants to have my, my identity in my wealth or my power or whatever that status may be, that part has died. That part is no more. And the part that remains is the part that has my identity in Christ. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That's where I am. So we want to practice living in Christ. How do I practice living in Christ? I'm obedient to Christ. I do what he says. As he says, hear this word of mine and act upon it. I'm obedient to him. We love one another. We love our enemies. We serve one another. That is how we practice living in Christ. Thank you very much for joining us this morning for Sunday School. I'm going to say a quick closing prayer and we'll be finished. Thank you. God, we're thankful for the lesson that you've provided this morning, God, that you knew about two months ago, that we would be in this scripture and read and see that our identity is in Christ alone. You knew these times we would be in today, and you gave us this scripture, God, and we're so thankful for it. I pray that, God, you would help us to know that our identity is in you alone and to act upon that. God, we're thankful for Jesus Christ. We're thankful, God, for your mercy and grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.